Well, I did my undergraduate education at, at Northwestern right. um, in engineering, right. and I had always planned on becoming an orthodontist. Um, I did a specialty in biomaterials, and so then I trained at UCSF, and I decided to stay at UCSF for my orthodontic residency. Right. And um, uh, I was interested in orthodontics in the, in the kind of the technical aspects of treatment, mm -hmm. and I really just kind of stumbled upon working in the realm of, of sleep disordered breathing. How did you stumble upon it? Uh, actually through a patient. Mm -hmm. So I had a patient, um, I think my second year in practice, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we are planning on doing jaw surgery for this patient, mm -hmm. and he kept falling asleep in the chair. And as you know, orthodontic appointments are not that long. And so I was a bit worried, so I asked him to get um, evaluated and get tested. So he, during his sleep study, he desaturated to uh, like 63. And so his diagnostic sleep study then became a titration sleep study, so they put a CPAP on him for the rest of the night. Right. And so uh, at that point then, the urgency was to try to really get him ready for surgery. And so his treatment plan changed from just doing one jaw to then doing two jaw. Two, two and jaw. that was my foray. And then that's actually how I met CG. And was, at, the, at this point, was CPAP being introduced or was that not even an option? Oh, no, he definitely was on CPAP okay. at that point, from that point until surgery. Okay. Um, his cardiovascular was really um, high because he, he desaturated so low. Wow. Um, and his sleep apnea was very, uh, very severe. So in, in talking with the surgeon, right. so I, uh, surgeon Casey Lee, okay. so we started working together with that. and um, Just an everyday surgeon. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> One of the world's best. Right. <laughs> and um, uh, I told Casey that I wanted to learn more about it. And he said, well, you know, um, let me introduce you to CG. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for an orthodontist to work with. And so I met CG, and he asked me to give a lecture to the fellows. Mm -hmm. And so I gave um, a couple of lectures. And after I had given a couple of lectures, he asked me to continue giving lectures. And it was CG's dream to have this multidisciplinary clinic. Mm -hmm. And so he had asked if I could participate in that multidisciplinary clinic where they have all different specialties and the patients come and are evaluated by everybody as a team. And so soon after that, then I, they gave me an adjunct position at Stanford. Um, at UCSF, because of my engineering background, when I was a first year resident, that, well, actually, when I became a second-year resident, they asked me to teach biomechanics and biomaterials to the first-year residents, which is very easy if you're an engineering major. <laughs> so um, I started doing that my second and third year, and then when I graduated, they actually gave me a, a position. The tricky part is, is um, it starts with the education, um, yeah. not just the public, but the healthcare provider. And um, you know, since it's such a new field, it's not really in any dental school curriculum, but even in medical schools, the amount of training that medical students get in um, sleep medicine is is probably not enough. Right. Think of it as kind of like this this foreboding black cloud that makes any disorder worse. And if you can actually um, treat the sleep problems um, or the sleep-related breathing problems, mm -hmm. then it's much easier to treat the primary disorder. I think um, one other facet that has allowed us to um, explore other things mm -hmm. is there's a lot of cross education amongst us mm -hmm. and so um, uh, and and there's a kind of there's a, a vibrancy of spirit and, and a curiosity that um, if one of us has an idea then um, all of us will consider exploring it mm -hmm. and so um, there's some things that that uh, I, I can speak in my own office mm -hmm. that we'll think about trying and so we'll try it and uh, well, I'll collect data on it, I'll collect photos, mm -hmm. and then I'll present it to, the, um, I'll present it to them. Right. And just having that collaboration on then refining the technique or refining the um, philosophy mm -hmm. or targeting something different, um, that, that's completely, completely unique in, in the dialogue that we have with each other. And um, uh, I, I would say it, it's really having a, completely being open-minded because mm -hmm. You know, CG has, uh, uh, he has such imagination. And not only that, he knows the field of medicine so well. He knows all facets. And, you know, he knows neurology, he knows pulmonology, he knows ENT. He actually has a good understanding of orthodontics. And so we can all bounce ideas around. And he'll, everybody's input is really, um, valued. it's really valued and it's really heard. Yeah. You're so. all behaving like physician scientists. 
not just plain clinicians. You're all doing like involved in doing some form of research. Yes, and you know, there's there's no ego, and so if somebody doesn't have a good idea, um, and if th there's no hesitation to say, sure. you know, maybe that's not going to work, or and, and people don't get offended by it.